Welcome to Ahqam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah, thank you. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, our previous discussions were in regards to Jama'a Salah, and we were talking about you know, the importance and, and how much reward there is in, in doing uh, Jama'a. Today, I want to discuss with you the qualities and characteristics of the Imam of the Jama'ah. So someone who leads, what are the prerequisites of this person? InshaAllah. A'udhu billah, as-sami'an alim min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayibin al-tahirin. The criteria of the Imam of the Jama'ah. It is mandatory that for the one who wants to lead a group of people, or just even one or two uh, individuals for the Salah of the Jama'ah, there are certain conditions that should be met in order for that individual be able to lead uh, people for the prayers. The first uh, condition is to be adolescents, in other words, to be baligh and reach that age of puberty and bulugh so he can uh, actually uh, lead the prayers of the people. And that's important, of course. Uh, the bulugh is an important when uh, the one begins to uh, practice and perform all his obligatory and wajib acts, becomes wajib upon, upon that individual. Um, the second condition is to be the Shia of the Ahlul Bayt the 12 Imams of the Holy Progeny of the Prophet So he must be a follower of Ahlul Bayt In other words, we cannot follow the one who doesn't follow Ahlul Bayt Even those who follow just half of them Just six Imams or seven Imams and they stop on the rest of the Imam uh, we cannot uh, follow them and um, pray behind them because the condition is that they have to be following and believing in 12 Imams of Ahl Bayt uh, um, The third condition is to be righteous, to be Adil and the definition here about the right, righteous and the Adil is that he is an individual who adheres to and acts upon the obligatory duties and refrains from the pro prohibited acts. In other words, he should have some kind of taqwa, piousness, such that if his neighbors or his colleagues were asked about him, they would report of his good nature, commitment, righteousness, and piety. That is the definition of, of uh, adala and to be adil and righteousness. That's important. The fourth condition uh, the Imam of the Jama'ah must have is to be sane, to be aqil. Otherwise, the ones who has no um, ability to um, have the awareness, in other words, the insane, we cannot follow and, and print behind him. So that's important as well. Yeah. The fifth condition is that to be of legitimate birth. Okay. In other words, to be, to be uh, with halal birth, not the haram birth, i.e. zina, na'udhu billah. So that person must be from uh, a halal uh, birth, so we can follow and, and pray behind him. And the last one, number six, um, to perform the salah in the correct way. That's important. That the imam of the jama'ah should know the rules and should know um, the basic uh, meanings and the basic uh, the way of praying and the way of pronouncing the words for example you should know the uh, the rules of the qira'ah for example the fatha the kasra the dhamma and so forth 
So in this case, if he meets all these conditions, uh, we now be able to follow this Imam and become as the Imam of the Jama'ah of the prayers. MashaAllah. Shaykh, it's funny you say that the last one. I mean, um, you know, if you look at the Iranian community, <coughs> the Pakistani community, which I belong to, sometimes the Imam of the Jama'ah, he has, doesn't have the correct pronunciation of, of the words. Um, is it okay to, you know, f um, pray behind that person? Inshallah, we'll come to this mas'ala later on that if he does a mistake, then you have to correct yourself. So let's say if, you, if he reads, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. you correct it by saying Alhamdulillah you, by yourself. Mm -hmm. So you try to correct it, that specific word or letter by yourself. And then you can follow that Imam. Of course, um, if that, as I've mentioned, if he doesn't read the Salah incorrectly, if he reads the Salah, in a way that is that correct, then you can't follow him. You can't mm -hmm. pray behind him. He must be able, that's the condition, perform the salah in a correct way. The harakat, yes. uh, the ruku, the sujood, everything should be correct and organized. Otherwise, we cannot follow that imam. And of course, um, it is also mandatory for the imam and the leader of the uh, congregation and the salah to be male. Mm. That's the main thing, if there are male behind him. Yes or even mixed, male and female. But uh, women can also have their own Imam Jama'ah, as I mentioned in uh, the last episode, to be a female uh, Imam of Jama'ah, and the followers are all female. So if there's a female congregation, there is no objection in having a female uh, Imam That's to fine, lead yes. the she can She can lead uh, just the woman only. Uh, but if we have male and female, or just male, then you must have uh, a male, male Imam Jama'ah. Exactly. Ahsan. Shaykh, what happens um, if the, you know, the Imam, so the most um, pious or the most qualified person that we have, um, doesn't pray standing up? What if he prays on his seat or if he's sitting down on his knees and praying because he's ill? Uh, is uh, he allowed to lead the Jama'ah in that position? The person who is able to perform the salah in a standing position, he is not allowed to follow an imam who prays in a sitting position. You must follow an imam who stands upright and, and prays in a standing position. That's the rule. Also, the one who is in a sitting position, he cannot follow the imam <coughs> who is in a lying position, you know, sleeping on, yes. the, on the floor and praying because of his illness, for example. So you have to follow the one who matches your condition and your state. So if standing, then you follow the Imam who, who can stand and uh, perform the Salah correctly. Shaykh, what happens if we have an Imam of the Jama'ah and he has Let's say he's got an excuse to have, um, let's say, an ajasa on his garment, or maybe he performed tayammum and he didn't perform wudu. Um, am I still allowed to pray behind this person? If the excuses are all justifiable, in other words, he's got, let's say, wounds on his hands, and he's actually using some kind of, um, um, let's say. Uh, bandage on his hand due to this injury and he has to do jabira wudu then we can follow him that's fine or tayammum for example he is in a condition that he must do only tayammum also there's the illness there is something in his body he cannot touch water for example skin mm -hmm. issues and so forth then we can still follow that imam okay. as long as the imam can stand upright and pray there's no issue with it mashallah mashallah so, in regards to the <coughs> niya of, of the Salah, is it mandatory that I, de I identify who the Imam <coughs> of the, the Jama'ah is before I begin my niya of the Salah? Yes, indeed. Um, it is mandatory for the follower to identify the Imam who he wants to pray behind. And if if you just make the intention that, for example, oh, just to keep it in mind that I follow 
the current Imam, this Imam who is now I'm behind, um, I follow this Imam. That's enough. You don't have to know his name, his surname, and so forth. Just to identify the person who's standing in the front of the Jama'ah, that should be sufficient. I sense, mashallah. <coughs> Shaykhna, in what parts of the Salah should I recite um, the dhikr and what part should I stay silent when in Jama'ah, in the congregation? Well, it is mandatory and wajib for the one who prays behind an Imam as a follower to re uh, recite and read all the uh, parts of the Salah by himself. Ruku', sujood, um, um, tasbihat al-arba'ah, and the third and fourth of the rak'ah. The only exception that you have to keep silent and listen to the Imam is when he reads Hamd and Surah in the first and second rak'ah. That's it. Otherwise, the rest of the parts and the acts of the Salah, you must recite them by yourself. So that's the, the importance and, and, and the difference uh, between what parts we have to recite and what parts we have to keep silent and quiet. Um, because the Imam in, in this part, in the Hamd and Surah, he's reciting, so that's sufficient for the ma'moom, for the follower, to just keep silent or just mention dhikr as I mentioned, to say la ilallah, or, or, or for example, subhanallah, or salawat, as a mustahab, and uh, not to read and, and not to recite alhamd and surat by itself. Shaykhna, we're all lining up to get ready for salah. Uh, everyone's doing the niyyah now. The imam has stood up, he's done the uh, aqama, he stood up, he's getting ready to, to um, begin the salah. Am I allowed to do the takbir um, before the imam, the entering the prayer, takbir al ihram? Am I allowed to do that before the Imam of the Jama'ah has done so? Well, you're not allowed to um, start the Salah by yourself. Because if it's Jama'ah, then you have to follow the, the Imam's uh, procedures. And, and, and when he starts the Takbirah, then you can start. Otherwise, you cannot start Takbirah before him. So you keep quiet, silent. When the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, you start the Salah afterwards straight away by saying Allahu Akbar to gain the rewards of uh, the takbirah before he starts Bismillah and mm -hmm. uh, Surah Al-Hamd. So that's important as well uh, for those who wish to get more rewards that you catch up with the Imam's takbirah. When he says it, you say it straight away after, after him. So yes, you have to wait until the Imam um, recites the takbirah. And what about towards the end, the taslim that we do at the end? Is it okay for me to finish my taslim before the Imam or do I need to wait until the Imam has finished the taslim in order for me to finish my salah? Well, if one intentionally uh, does the salam before the Imam and taslim of the salah and to end the salah before the Imam, um, he's allowed, it's not wajib and must that you must wait until the Imam says assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You can actually uh, proceed the Imam and, and finish the Salah. However, um, the Salah's thawab will be less because you're supposed to be following the Imam of the Jama'ah in every act, in every segment of the Salah. So in this case, if you proceed the Imam and finish quickly before him and say the Taslima, um, you're allowed, but as I've said, the thawab and the reward will be less in this situation. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikh. Thank you for this discussion. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us on this episode. Inshallah, we'll have more discussions on uh, Jama'a Salah, inshallah, on next episode. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.